Back in 2001, before the rise of comrade Vladimir Putin, American missionaries were invited by the Russian Department of Education to teach morals and ethics in their orphanages, in their prisons, in their businesses, even in their fire and police departments. These missionaries were allowed to teach from the perspective of their faith. And so they went as witnesses to the light, like John the Baptist, to testify to the light that they might, so that others might believe through him. They believe that Jesus, the true light that enlightens all, everyone, was coming into the world. The experience of two missionaries in a rough and Russian or, orphanage was particularly illuminating. The name of the one missionary his, was Will Fish. That was his actual name, Will Fish. Um, but wouldn't it make a great pseudonym for a Christian who was willing to fish for people? But anyway, Will Fish, one of the missionaries there, was talking about what his work in an orphanage that had about a hundred boys and girls in there, boys and girls who were abandoned, abused, and were left into these state-run agencies. Fish tells the story of what happened one particularly holiday season when uh, the time came for them to tell the story about the traditional Christmas of Mary and Joseph. And Probably the first time these children and, and maybe even some of the staff had heard the Christmas story at all. Fish says, we told them about Mary and Joseph arriving in Bethlehem and not finding any room in the inn and how the couple went to the stable and that's where Jesus was born and placed in a manger. Will said throughout the story, <laughs> they... Um, the children sat listening really closely, and some of the staff even sat on the edge of their seats trying to grasp every word. After completing the story then, they did a little thing like they do with VBS and tried to have a craft for the kids. And they gave the kids three pieces of cardboard that they could put together to make a, a little manger. And, and then they had some little pieces of square napkin that they had brought along that they could tear up and use as strips of straw in the manger. Then they had little flannel squares that they could make use for a blanket made out of a, an old nightgown that an American woman was uh, about to throw away. And then they brought along little tan felt pieces that American children had cut into the shapes of dolls or uh, little babies that they could place in the manger. Well, Will started walking around these people, the, the boys and girls, as they were uh, assembling their little mangers. And he came across one little boy named Misha, who was about six years old, and he noticed that his manger was complete. And so, as he was looking at the manger there, he noticed that there were two babies laying in this manger. And so he hurries and asks the Russian translator to come over real quickly and, and ask the boy why there are two babies laying in the manger. And the little boy, Misha, starts relating the story of Christmas to the people, or to uh, Will there. And he really uh, told the story exactly as he had just been told the story himself until he got to the part where Mary laid the baby in the manger. And that's where Misha started to ad-lib. He said that when Mary laid the baby Jesus in the manger, that Jesus looked up at him and asked him if he had a place to stay. And Misha said, well, I have no papa and I have no mama, so no, I don't have a place to stay. And Misha then said that Jesus asked him to come and lay in the manger with him. And Misha said, well, I would like to, but I don't have a gift like everybody else has. But I really wanted to be in the manger. So I thought to myself, what gift could I give Jesus? And then I thought, Jesus 
I thought, well, if I could keep Jesus warm, that might be a good enough gift. And so I asked Jesus if I could crawl in and keep him warm. And Jesus said, if you keep me warm, that would be the best gift of all that anyone has given me. So I got in the manger, and Jesus looked at me and told me that I could stay with him for always. Isaiah prophesied that the Messiah would be Emmanuel, God with us. And the Gospel of Matthew tells us directly that Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. In this Advent season, we discover, like the orphan Misha, that the God who came in Jesus Christ will never abandon or abuse us, but will be with us for always. That's a great promise. The problem is, we live in a fallen world. And this fallen world, as we go through life, it seems at times that we're abandoned by God. Oh, intellectually, we know that in this fallen world, we're going to meet with frustrations and disappointments, hurts and abuse, with temptations and trials. We know that the straw of sin will be a part of our lives. And we also know that some 2,000 years later, we still need a Savior who will never abandon us. Jesus promises to be with us. He promises to be with us when that cancer biopsy comes back positive instead of negative. When the final mark on our, when the mark on our final is a, an F rather than an A. When our spouse of 15 years decides they're walking out the door never to return. When the dream of success in business is once again downsized and diminished. When the late night phone call announces a death rather than a birth. When the longing for family harmony is disrupted once again by shouts. When the desire for companionship is drained by another lonely holiday season. In all these depressing, discouraging, disappointing situations, in all these straw-filled moments, our Lord is with us as Emmanuel. We're never completely without companionship or support as long as there are two babies in the manger. Our problem is that we have a hard time keeping Jesus warm. You see, the temptations of this world, the material things, the, the presents and the gifts, tempt us to crawl out of the manger and pursue things that do not last, rather than stay with Jesus, who will be there for always. Sometimes we're blind to the manger. We don't see the manger. In our frantic search for comfort and joy, we look for lasting pleasure in all the wrong places, clubs and classes, parties and programs, internet chat rooms and professional conferences. Sure, there's a certain, certainly some good that come from these gatherings, but they also distract us from the one place where we can find unconditional acceptance and unending peace in the manger. And there's also the problem of incessant busyness. We just don't have time for the manger. These days leading up to Christmas are often driven by endless to-do lists that have to be done before Christmas. School concerts, 
shopping excursions, putting up the Christmas tree, decorating the inside of the house, decorating the outside of the house, stringing all the Christmas lights together, writing Christmas cards, making a menu for the open house, buying all the ingredients for the open house, and then cooking all the goodies and snacks for the open house. And the church even sometimes adds to our busyness with programs and pageants. It's kind of ironic, isn't it, that the demands of Advent prevent us from focusing on the manger. Perhaps we need to put aside one evening this week just to sit down and be with Jesus. Listen to real Christmas carols, not the commercial ones like I'm dreaming of a white Christmas or things like that. Perhaps listen to Handel's Messiah just be with Jesus in the manger and keep him warm. The good news that God has for us today is that there's always room in the manger for another baby. As we make our yearly trip to Bethlehem, we find and we no, we will find the one who will stay with us on our journey every step of the way and will guide us toward the manger and invite us into his kingdom, his everlasting kingdom, one marked by love and peace and justice. The baby will comfort us and support us, never leaving us, abusing us or abandoning us. He is with us for always. The challenge for us, as close as we are to Christmas and yet as far as we are from Christmas, is to be like John the Baptist and to testify to the power of Christ in our own lives and to tell the world about what Emmanuel is up to. That's what Will Fish was doing when he traveled to Russia. That's what Misha was doing when he put two babies in the manger. That's what John the Baptist did when he came as a witness to testify to the light of Christ so that all might believe through him. It's fascinating that John the Gospeler never calls John the prophet, the Baptist. He kind of looks beyond the baptizing that John was doing to the witnessing that John was doing. In John's gospel, John the Baptist had one function, and that was being a witness to the light that was coming into the world. There's a lesson in this for us. Our challenge as Christians is to never simply stay close to Jesus and enjoy his forgiveness and acceptance and peace. Our challenge is also to explain to the world why we're choosing to be one of two babies in the manger. Jesus invites us to join him in the manger he invites us to enjoy him always, but he also invites us to share him always. And so may the peace of God, which surpasses human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.